two great analysts uh, to talk to today. I'm very excited to get uh, kind of a table set with, with JP and Samir Patel. For those of you who don't know Samir, he is the, a principal with the Sovos Group, and he is one of the, the foremost thinkers, I think, in, in enterprise collaboration and, and software. So Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, guys. So, you know, I'm going to start with you, JP, and I, I just want to kind of figure out, you know, kind of use the old cliche a little bit, you know, what inning we're in. I mean, where are we? You've, you've kind of watched enterprise mobility for some time. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're moving at a much faster pace. The velocity of change is happening. Um, you know, the iPhone helped that. Where are we, though? Is it going to, is it going to happen a lot quicker going forward, or, or are we just at the beginning? Yes, definitely the, uh, the pace is accelerating. Um, in the report that we put together on rogue devices, I put together a framework that uh, talks about the innings or what I call the eras. Uh, and if you look at this in historical context, we had an era, say, circa you know, pre-iPhone, so 2005 to that mid-2007, where it was really about departmental applications, but also putting in place some very critical infrastructure. So RIM played an instrumental role in getting us the infrastructure that we're all kind of standing on the shoulders of right now. And then the, the kind of disruptive phase that Steve start talking about this radical kind of personalization uh, or consumerization coming into the enterprise. Um, and at that point, we started seeing, you know, that was really, I think, the milestone there again. It was set by Apple. And most recently now, this kind of collaborative era that we're moving into, that was, uh, I think, I would, I would classify the, the big event there again by Apple, the Big Bang, which is a year ago um, this month uh, with the release of the iPad. Um, I've seen this really tipped a lot of enterprise IT budgets uh, to control sure. that and then opened up a whole, the whole uh, application arena. Well, you mentioned, JP, uh, the, uh, kind of the mobile collaboration fusion that we're seeing and, and a big part of what's happening today. So I want to, in turn, ask you, Samir, you know, you focus a lot on, on working together, collaboration, and I think mobility plays a big part of that. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you, I mean, elucidate for us a little bit how crucial mobile is in terms of this, this new state of collaboration and also the changing nature of work. Sure. So I think, you know, I think um, when, you, when you look at, um, just like you were mentioning earlier, you know, cloud, mobile, social. <clears throat> when you look at it from, a, from an enterprise perspective, uh, you know, we've, in my mind, and I come from the software side, not, the, um, not really the, the device side, if you will, and, I, and obviously they're, they're linked today, but, uh, you know, the the first round of all of the innovation that we've seen so far on the, on the enterprise side has been largely to emulate desktop interfaces on a smartphone. So we work with some of the largest organizations in the world on helping them understand how to drive collaboration. And when, they look, when you start looking at what they expect out of mobile, they're like, everything I can do on my social platform internally, I need to do it on my phone, right? And if you, if you, if you look at that and you try to understand, you know, um, it's, if you try to look at, use that as sort of a baseline, you start to really appreciate how we're really in the infancy of this whole mobile revolution, right? And you start to expand the definition from mobile enabling desktop applications or web applications to mobility. You start to see huge gaps in terms of, you know, the, the, the supply chains that we have at large companies as well as the demand generation efforts, right? And what I mean by that is, is you know, when you, when, you, when you expand it to mobility, you start to look at, you know, what about the factory worker who knows more about assembling products and putting stuff together than anybody probably in the company? What about your suppliers, your component suppliers who understand how the stuff works? Um, on, the, on the demand side, what about the barista at Starbucks who is closest to the customer? compared to anybody else, right? Uh, the doctor, when you're on the operating table and is sitting there with internet devices, uh, internet-enabled devices more and more, uh, their need to collaborate, their need to share critical data that's happening now that they need people to come together on, group the right people together, use, get the right information, and continue working on you. And you start to think about, or the retailer for that matter, right? And even customers, customers walking into your retail stores. When you start to look at mobility, and then you superimpose some of the innovation we've seen so far, which is tablets on the hardware side, uh, geolocation, uh, you know, group, close private groups in terms of how we work, as well as some of the big platforms. You know, you truly appreciate that it's it's ground zero. I mean, we've got a long way to go before we truly, you know, unlock massive, massive budgets inside companies. And if we start looking at it as tablets, we'll hit a ceiling really quickly, mm -hmm. or devices rather, not just tablets. 
Um, so that's what excites me about when mobile starts to actually, you know, truly impact future of work. Um, so what I'm hearing, I think, from both of you is well, we've come a long way and, and velocity's increasing, but I still think we're near the beginning in the sense. So because of that, I would ask you, JP, what is still broken about enterprise mobility? Because I think that, you know, it's not all kind of roses at this point. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, you know, we were coming out of the economic downturn, so a lot of budgets were clamped down from the standpoint of zero sum. So, so if I'm in <coughs> IT and I'm going to uh, increase my budget to undertake this emerging kind of uh, project that has a good kind of business case, I still have to do something, uh, stop doing something else. Um, and especially if organizationally, you know, telecommunications in one silo, IT is in another, so there was a real kind of thing that was broken there. I have seen now, though, thanks to this kind of bottom-up approach and then the top-down from the executives, that those budgets are now starting to uh, be increased. Um, so that's, um, on that kind of, that was the major impediment that was stopping a lot of adoption of mobility. And then also with release I, iOS 4 and then 4.2 with the iPad, we now have the device management hooks to be able to do some creative solutions we're going to talk about throughout the day about being able to um, kind of balance the needs of the enterprise with the needs of the end user. When we talk about mo mo enterprise mobility and what's broken, what still needs to be fixed, I think what comes to mind to me is there's opportunity. So I, I'll ask both of you, I'll ask Samir, you first, you know, where is there opportunity today for an entrepreneur uh, or someone who's just smart in the enterprise mobility space. Yeah, so I think, you know, what we've seen big adoption here so far, at least the adoption that we've seen so far, has been largely two parts of the enterprise, right? One is, is IT saying we need to essentially provide devices, alternate devices to folks for, for, for various reasons. The second has been on the front end. It's been sales, people who are in sales or in marketing who are out there, um, you know, much easier to sort of um, start to present and, um, there's no reason to really lug a laptop, but it's been more of a hardware convenience in some ways, right? When we start to look at um, how some of these individual processes inside organizations can sort of benefit from having synced up data between what's in my pocket, what Michael's using, and then maybe a desktop when I start to get back, you start to unlock a lot of breaks in how we collaborate just because, of, just because we're chained down by location. Right, and, and there's still a ton of left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. It's just a few nifty, really good consumer apps that do a really great job, like Evernote, for example, which I can't live without. They do a really good job of, you know, every device is synced at every That's what I have right time. here for all my notes. There you go, Evernote. there you go. Um, but I think as you start to sort of, you know, start to cherry pick business processes inside the organization, right, and you start to look at how those pieces start to work together, Layer on social, which means that you know, sales can't just work without talking to marketing, and marketing can't talk without, without talking to R&D and product. You start to really understand use cases that have a ton of scale across the organization, but are really centered around improving discrete processes. You map that with the, you know, with the, with the ability of these devices being anywhere. Um, and I think you've got a much bigger opportunity again you know, compared to how many licenses can I sell for this one device or application, um, because you've got are the business units starting to want into play versus just IT centrally buying it, right? That's when the premiums start to go up. Right. JP, any opportunities you see in the space? Well, there are really two sides of the coin. One is the device side, and the other are the applications that run on the device. So what was successful for the iPhone? Was it the device or was it the apps, right? So there are really two sides to it. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of pain right now getting, um, getting control, control, I mean, managing the uh, the device side of the coin in terms of device management and all the policies that go along with that, ranging from stipends, bring your own, there are all kinds of strategies we're going to be talking about. And then Samir, I think, pretty much hit the, the application side of the coin, which is looking at what are the horizontals that are going to kind of uh, take us beyond mobile email, and then what, what kind of customization, what, what goes into a good app in terms of single purpose, highly optimized. Let's talk a little bit very quickly about the CIO organization and, and how that's going to look. I mean, I want to know particularly how IT is going to be reshaped. So let's look forward three, three to five years. Um, I think that, you know, command and control was the past. Um, I think obviously nowadays with kind of a, a bottoms up uh, democratized world where people are bringing in their devices, IT has to get a grip on this. 
things are changing, and I think that's going to change the IT organization. So no. I would ask you, how, how is it going to look in five years? Well, I think, you know, <clears throat> the closest analogy I have is, I mean, I think IT has been through this once with outsourcing. So they went in general. When, they, when you look at, you know, they went through the whole own all my apps, have thousands of developers and people in my, under my nose. You know, we started moving towards letting control, letting go a little, right? And we sort of understood that, okay, fine, we've got to move from becoming really good doers to being doers where we need to, but being really good managers and good procurement and understanding how these things work. The same's happening on the application side, not just the people side in many ways, right? You know, people are coming to work with their own machines. Their um, uh, IT in some ways is saying, well, if I have control over the applications, I'll let you bring your own machines. That might be easier and cheaper on me. Um, but I don't think they've made that connection that they've actually been through it right now. There's so much, uh, there's just a lot of anxiety out there. Um, uh, those that are sort of understanding how these things actually are making a difference, they're, they're, they've started moving applications from on-premise to cloud will be the ones who will start to understand what it means to really embrace some of this whole very federated model of, um, of, of not only A, allowing people to sort of you know, be able to use these devices, but B, also allowing people to provision their own, own UI layers into enterprise data, right? And I think that's gonna have a big impact. But if you speak to a few of the CIOs who have done this already, you'll see that they're making these connections and saying, I've been here before, just in a different part of my, you know, different part of my IT organization. It used to be people, now it's apps. So. I'm getting the uh, uh, virtual hook from Surge over there. So I have one more question uh, for you, JP. So uh, I think Samir mentioned apps, and we'll be talking today a lot about, uh, it's on, on everyone's mind, the, the, the kind of the app revolution in a sense. But, you know, on the software side, uh, we're starting to see the application marketplaces come in to the workplace. What, can you talk a little bit about how you think that that's gonna evolve a little bit? I mean, is this, it, it seems so different so far away from the traditional IT software mm -hmm. kind of purchasing process of the past, but now we have this app models. Can you talk a little bit about how that could evolve? Yeah, it moves to shifting the, in a nutshell, shifting the locus of control from, uh, from you know, central to the user. So we're seeing user, we're gonna ultimately see kind of self-service types of approaches that kind of where you can win-win. You can, you can have lower costs and at the same time really empower your workforce. Great. We'll be talking more about that. Well, you know, I want uh, to get a big round of applause for JP and Samir, and uh, we'll bring up our next speaker.